Today, we have the pleasure of having the beautiful Laura Malik mm -hmm. on again to teach us how to uh, generate more leads. And Laura is a top real estate agent in Maryland and really great at marketing and creating events. And a lot of you guys have asked, like, how do I generate leads? Where do I get leads? And Laura is going to give us her, her secret sauce mm -hmm. to how to generate leads beyond listings through creating community and finding business through events. So Laura, thank you so much for coming on. A lot of people are going to be hopping in, but we really appreciate you coming on and uh, you can get started whenever you'd like. All right. Sounds good. I'll jump in. So I'm excited for everyone to be here. I'm kind of curious in this group, since we're at late at night, are we dual career here or just the evening kind of worked better? Any comments or Tanya, do you know? Yeah, a lot of them are dual career. As a matter of fact, at least two of them are dual career. Um, so most people that come in here, you're going to probably have like 70% are dual career. Okay, fair enough. Good. Well, this is exciting because there's lots of ways to do business. And then if you're, you know, working kind of the nine to five job, and maybe you don't want to make more phone calls at night, or you don't want to work the weekends, this is going to give you a really creative uh, way of lead generating very purposefully, um, which is why I'm really passionate about it, because it's you know, lead generation should be fun. And this is just a matter of talking to people that you already know. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, as Tanya said, I am licensed here in Maryland for about eight years. Um, I'm a $10 million producer. So it's about 25 to 27 units. I say I'm a solo agent or I'm a leveraged solo agent. Um, I do have some help with, you know, you know, admin runner and I have a marketer that helps me. And then three years ago, my husband, who is a firefighter and still is, but joined my team. And so he helps me a lot with the business as well. So I don't know, my team, a solo agent, I'm not sure. Um, but what's interesting is that I got into real estate, as you guys can see, and I did not know anybody where I lived. I am from South Dakota and lived in Colorado, and I started real estate in Maryland. And so as you get in the business, one of the first things that people say is call your sphere, call everybody that you know, and let them know you're in real estate. And I was like, well, I don't have anybody to call. So what am I going to do? <laughs> So I did the things that you guys are already aware of. I hosted the open houses. I door knocked around the open houses. I did the FISBOs, dropped off, you know, CMAs. I did all the works. But I also knew because I kept hearing that your sphere is so important that I also needed to build that. So I'm like, okay, well, I really need to build relationships. Um, and that is really the secret sauce that I saw that when you do it purposely can really build a big business. So whether you don't have a sphere or you do have a sphere, this is going to be for you. And although I say the word events because it's easy for me to placeholder that. What I really want you to think is that it's actually um, purposeful time to strengthen relationships because events can look small and big, which we're going to, you know, talk about. Um, and then last thing, of course, married to a firefighter, have two kids in a chocolate lab. So out of today, what I want you to get out of is how you can do this, how you can kind of host these events, whether they're very small or whether they're very big. Um, and the reason why I say that is I always want to start with mindset, especially as we're getting started in real estate or wherever our journey is. We naturally see what others are doing in real estate. We naturally compare ourselves to others. And, you know, we're very aware that there's these agents and these groups that do throw these huge client appreciation events. I'm one of them, <laughs> but I also throw things really small and I make things very simple and very purposeful. And so you have to remember that you need to get started on your journey, but it can look completely different than what you think. So if you're like, I don't have, you know, I only have two past clients. How am I going to throw an event? I have that for you. Or if you don't have any past clients, you're like, how am I going to throw an event? Like, I don't want to wait three years. You're going to understand what you guys can start doing today. So we're going to discuss the what, the why, and the how. And I want you to be able to walk away with actionable items where you're like, I know what to do. And here's what I'm going to do in my business as like a new form of lead generation. So going back to the mindset, um, I realized I had to start small. And so here's how small I started that I want you guys to think about is that I really um, purposefully every month, I made sure I was going on a coffee date. And so I made sure I was going on a coffee date with somebody else in business. And so, you know, you can schedule that before your work, after work, or maybe on the weekend, um, maybe you can schedule a walk during your lunch break, but I scheduled to where I wanted to meet someone. So somehow I kind of knew 
I wanted to strengthen a relationship and I made sure once a month I was going on a coffee. Maybe your schedule allows more. So feel free to kind of like take my idea and be like, oh, that sounds good, but I can add more into it. Um, I purposely had a family over with my family because with firefighter schedule that works 24 hours and my kids were young at that age. I said it right this time. I always say I had little kids. <laughs> Um, I needed to incorporate them. And so we purposely would bring another family over just to really strengthen that relationship. And then I grew um, to like kind of hosting like small mastermind lunches where I looked for other people in business and you can host them on a weekend. But what you can see here is that people want connection and we are all so busy that we forget to make these little dates or we forget to make these little gatherings that are actually really important in relationship building. And so when you become the person that can create this community, whether it's coffee, small lunches or meetups, um, that's the beauty of it. Because can you think about like, you know, together with a friend, you, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in like six months. It's because both of you are busy and you forget to make the time. And so part of your job as a real estate agent is to make sure you're making that time to see those people and to strengthen the relationships or to meet new people and to strengthen those relationships as well. So eventually what I started doing was since my kids um, were younger is I started just doing mom groups, like just saying, I'll meet you at the park. Um, just because I wanted to get to know another mom or I wanted something to do with my kids to meet other people. And then what happened from there was I decided to host these little parties. And so my first one was like a little cookie decorating party. But I saw like by doing these extra little events that weren't costing me that much money that I also enjoyed and I was incorporating my kids, people were so thankful. And then as on the other side on social media, I'm showing up as the real estate agent, which we'll dive into, right? You're like, all you're talking about is having fun. But I showed up that I'm doing real estate as well is that they started to like, know and trust me more. And I started getting more business just because I was top of mind by not just doing real estate, but by providing an experience. And so that's how we're going to change your mindset of like, be the connector, be the person that brings people together with like what your life season is, which we'll jump into. So in real estate, we always have two types of business. We have today's business and tomorrow's business. And it's so important that we're working both. And if you're in real estate and like just getting started, you're planting all those seeds and it's so hard sometimes because those seeds might not come for another year or for you know two years or three years. Like I'm listing a home right now and this seed was planted four years ago. <laughs> four years ago, I started talking to this person. So that's why it's important to make sure that you're always doing some form of lead generation that's bringing you today's business. Now with what I'm bringing up, it can bring you today's business and we'll talk about that. But Something else in your business should be open houses or door knocking, something where you're finding those people that are ready. Your events are going to bring today and, and tomorrow's, but mostly tomorrow's business because you're working on strengthening that relationship. Just because you meet someone doesn't mean that they're going to have, you know, that sale for you right away at that coffee date. But six months from now or that year from now, you're going to be really thankful that you started that relationship. So what's important is to be like, I like to say that my philosophy was to create community and I want to give back to the community to like help others um, find their community. Like it all kind of went together, but really people just want to feel included and they want to do things. So that being said, how I kind of told you about my little bit of my journey of I started out small and started out got started bigger. I realized I wanted to host, you know, I was using my kids, but my very first like Malik group party, because I'm a little bit of a secret agent, was the Move with Malik pumpkin painting party. <laughs> and it was for eight 10 year olds or 10 eight year olds. And it was in my backyard. But that was like my first branded event. And sometimes we think so big that it needs to be at this big event place or it needs to be this huge event or have all our past clients. And it doesn't. And when I hosted that and I saw all the smiles, I saw all the appreciation, I saw all how my touches were there. I was like, OK, I can build off of this. So my next event that I wanted to do, I did want to do one of the bigger ones and I wanted to do, to do a client appreciation event and I wanted to host an egg hunt. And my husband is a very good supporter of my business, but I could tell he was a little like, OK, so we're going to throw this like party and, and you're going to find business and we're going to spend how much money. And so I budgeted accordingly between eggs and a bunny and um, food. Um, I was right around like eight hundred dollars. 
And so I hosted the egg event. And then through that, within six months, I had closed $36,000 in commission because I had about four leads that came from that one event. So I went back to him and I was like, $800 for $36,000? Like, what do you think of that? And so that was when we both realized that when you do it purposefully and you do it with the tools that I'm going to give you and you make it simple, it's really powerful because you need to be in, like in contact with people other than just real estate. And of course, you don't want to be a secret agent and I'll show you that. But that's why um, that's why I started to keep going with this, because I was like, well, my touches are fun. I get to see people. I get to create an experience where we're creating memories and having fun. We support the community and give back. And my business is thriving from it. So why do we want to do events? I think you can kind of see, but basically it's a purposeful way of reaching out to your database to stay in touch and find new business. So I mentioned in the beginning that I didn't have a sphere. And so I built that. I kept hearing how your sphere is so important. I did what I said. I started, you know, I started getting to know people, started having friends on Facebook, started having groups. I had a sphere, but I still was not reaching out to them on a consistent basis because in my head, I was like, what am I supposed to say? I don't know what to say. And I'm a little bit of like an introvert. So I was like, I don't have anything to say to them. But come 2020, when the world shut down, I had built my business off of open houses and door knocking and social media. That was how I found business. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Like, how am I going to find business? The, the number one way I did it is taken away from me. And I was like, well, I guess I'll do what everyone tells me to do and just contact my sphere. So I purposely just reached out to them basically once a quarter. And all I said was, how are you? Was my script and conversation started. And that year is when my business doubled by doing less work. And I was like, oh, so this is what everybody's talking about. And so it really just like clicked. And, you know, I'm sure you've heard some of the things that I'm saying. And I'm here telling you, I heard the same things and it clicked. But it is so important to stay in front of people and then to remind them creatively that you're in real estate and just to make them feel good, you're top of mind, your business will thrive. And so this is a really great fun way um, for you to do it. Another way to look at it is that it's going to take your form of lead generation. And so I honestly, it's not in my business to do open houses as much um, because I have so much else going in lead generation, like through the events, which you'll hear, like I do quite a few and a lot of touches, but it can take um, one of those away from you. And so one is that it creates a lot of fun and it creates FOMO, the fear of missing out. And I'm just, I'm not going to jump over that one. It's true. People want to be a part of it. Like we're all on social media. We're all seeing what's going on that you're going to intrigue them. They're going to want to be a part of your community. They're going to want to come to that next event when you're, you know, putting it on social media that this is what you're doing. It's a very easy way to add to a database. You're inviting people to some kind of event or something that you've put together. You can ask your people who you know, like, hey, do you know a friend who might like this? And don't worry, I'll go into ideas that work for you as well. Um, but it's a way to increase your database. And it's been a constant for me. This is how I'm always adding people to my database because I'll run into somebody new or I'll purposely try to meet new people. And I have something to invite them to, to build that relationship. And then of course, you're going to find that now business we talked about that today's and tomorrow's, but when you have them in there and you're staying in constant contact with them, you're going to find that now business where they're going to say, I'm so glad that you reached out. So-and-so wants to move, or I want to move or something like that. And it even happened in my touches where I had past clients that I was doing my due diligence of trying to stay in touch and they really wouldn't respond. And we had a great transaction. I'd gotten them a good deal. They had said they loved me and they really weren't responding to my text messages, which is fine. I had invited them to a few things and like nothing, like can't make it, thanks. And I'm like, at what point do I stop inviting? I didn't quite know, but I sent another one out and that was when I got a response and they said, oh, we can't make this. However, we're looking to buy and sell. When should we meet with you? <laughs> So it's not just the event that we're throwing. It's actually going to be this lead generation and this staying in contact of finding that now business is right there for you. So where do we get started? This is where I love building the business around who you are as an individual, because, you know, people like to be around like-minded people. And so if you can actually look inward and look what you have going on with your, you know, your work life and how much, you know, hours you can commit and what do you like to do 
where you can do it more purposely, which I said that in the beginning, like the event is actually purposeful time. And so I really encourage you, like, so for me, um, it was easy. I was, I'm a mom and I had little kids. And so I really leaned into that, knowing there was a lot of moms, knowing I could do play great, you know, play groups. I could, you know, create like, Hey, let's go meet at this park. I could create little parties. I really leaned into that. And then I really leaned in. I like to talk about business. So I really leaned into other women and even men who are like in business that we could have those coffee and lunch dates and things like that. But you can kind of come up like, do you like to golf? golf on a regular basis and try to meet new people and ask a friend, do you want to go hiking? You can, you can create that hiking group. Like there are other people who want to join you, especially when you put it on social media, people want to do things. They just don't want to plan it. It's just the truth. (laughs) And so if you really take the time, which, you know, you'll get better and better at it, but like, you don't have to create this, you know, egg hunt event, but what you can create is like, Hey, this is going on in the community. Tickets are $35. I really want to go. Who wants to go with me? So you also don't have to always pay for everyone by bringing people together. Um, So maybe you can also like look at your hobbies. Um, Maybe you can pick like create poker night. Maybe you want to try some cooking classes, like who are you and what do you like to do? And are you making time for that? Because I found as we all get busier, I start making less time of the things that, oh, I wish I could do that. Well, now you really need to, because it's a great form of lead generation. So if you like running, join a running group, like think of all the people that you're going to meet and guess where the business is at. The business is with people. And so that's why you want to know more people and be connected. And then what's cool is that you're connecting with somebody for something different other than just real estate, (laughs) but you're connecting with them something first on a common thing that you both share. So they're only going to want to friend you. They already probably like you. And then you're going to show up on social media and they're like, oh, you do real estate or, or it comes up in the conversation, however it happens. But now they know you for something other than just real estate and you have two connections. And then when they think of real estate, they're going to think of you. And so a perfect example was um, I had a daughter sign my daughter up for Girl Scouts a couple of years back. And I don't know what didn't work with my schedule, but there was a great opportunity for me to show up and meet a lot of new moms that I didn't know. And I couldn't do it or I didn't make it a priority. But what I did do is I friend everybody on Facebook. <laughs> I became friends with them. I do show up on social media to remind people that I'm in real estate. And sure enough, a couple of weeks into it, I had a mom that reached out and said, hey, we're thinking about selling an investment. I saw that you're in real estate you know, I'd love to chat. And so it's like, people don't want to just say, you know, they don't want to Google a real estate agent. They're really going to go to that first one that they see, and they're going to see it on social media when you're showing up as real estate agent. Um, any questions on where you can get started? We'll dive more into it if you need events and ideas, and I have that. So now we're going to talk about the foundation of hosting, which is probably the most important part of today and what I want you to get out of it. So whether you are doing these small gatherings, these small get-togethers, or you're hosting um, these huge events, your foundation is actually going to be the same. Because I think I mentioned it before, but the actual event or whatever you have created for that relationship is not the most important thing. It's actually all the touches that you did around it that are the most important. So when you're the foundation for hosting, we're going to go over why and the outcome. We're going to go over your touches. We're going to talk about money. We're going to talk about what it looks like the day of hosting. And then we're going to talk about, of course, how you want to show up um, on social media. So you definitely want to get the most out of your event, right? With Purple Simple Time, if you're not, you know, doing something completely real estate related, and especially if you have limited time, that's always my favorite. When you have limited time, you need to be very, very purposeful about what this is for and what you want to get out of it. Um, okay. So you want to think about why this is important. So like for me in the beginning, I was just trying to grow my database. So I just wanted to meet people. So that's why I wanted to go on a coffee day. That's why I wanted to meet up with a mom or something like that. So the reasons for the most part of why you're going to want the outcome is one is like, do you want to strengthen the relationships? Do you already have? Like, do you already have a really good sphere and you're a little uncertain how to show up as the real estate agent as choice? You know, are you really kind of uncertain of how maybe you should call them or something like that? Well, let's just work on strengthening the relationship and they're going to, you know, see that you show up through real estate, through creative ways, through social media and through future things. 
maybe you really need to find the business. If you really need to find the best business and want referrals, so that's going to be purpose, you know, your purpose. Well, there are certain things that we're going to do through that event to make sure that you're asking for that business. Sometimes you want to grow your database. So like for a while, I was always looking about finding the business and referrals and not saying that's still not the goal. Like you kind of have like you want one main goal and another goal will probably happen. But right now for my events, I'm really working on growing my database because what my database has done and the work that I've done for the last you know, two, this will be my third year. It's given me the same results, which I'm very happy with those results. But if I want to grow you know, do what you've always done, get what you've always gotten. I know I need more people in my database because my database is only producing about the 25 to 27 units. And so my goal is really to grow the database. And so now when I'm hosting these events, I'm thinking of who's somebody new that I don't know yet, you know, like how can I ask my sphere of who's already coming to invite someone? And so that's my focus. Um, another one is maybe you're wanting to do like on, you know, online reviews and testimonials. I just created a new Mallet group, um, Google page. And so I think I only have like two or three reviews. I have eight years of business. So I'm going to host an event where that is really going to be my focus because you can't have people do too much. You can't ask them to bring a friend. You can't ask them who do they know that's looking to buy or sell in real estate and ask them for a testimonial. Cause guess what? I did it and it doesn't work. <laughs> So that's how I knew, like, you really have to say, what's my number one focus out of this event that I'll know that, you know, I focused around and it, and it was a success. And the other few things might come from it. And one other one is kind of like photo or video view in action. Like if you're hosting, you know, buyer or seller seminars, that might just be, you know, the purpose, like you're just wanting to look more real estate e, which is totally a thing. Like I always wait, I looked way more successful than when I was in the beginning. I was hosting open houses like a champ and people thought I was closing houses and I hadn't even closed a rental yet. <laughs> so don't be afraid to be that person because we have to show them that's who we are and the business will come. Um, all right. So the outcome is very important. So then going on to the next part is timing. So in your business, if maybe you're only wanting to host, like if you're looking to host client appreciation events, or if you're looking to host a bigger event, there's, um, and you're only going to host one or two a year, you do want to be very purposeful on the timing, which you can see here, the best times for you to do that is going to be right before Thanksgiving. So sometime, I mean, you could do the end of October, but beginning of November. And the reason being is that they're going to get in front of family. They're going to get in front of friends. They're starting to see everybody for Thanksgiving and the holidays. You're now top of mind if anything comes up real estate wise. And they start thinking about that next year, whether, you know, maybe a move, you know, is in the works for them or not. The other one is right before the spring market. So in February, spring market keeps getting sooner and sooner, but you're going to want to try to do something in February, March. Same thing. People are interested in knowing what's going on in the market. They start to know people who are interested. So if you're like, I only want to host one, please focus and do it on the right time so that you can get the best results. For me, I do a lot of gatherings and events throughout the year. So I don't focus on these two timings. I focus on making sure I don't have like two events within six weeks. So I usually do like one about like one a quarter on timing that works for me. But the huge thing with timing and when you're planning it is like, you know, I've, I'm really on this new track of business of like, make short runways for yourself. Like if you're really wanting to host an event, well, let's look for the month of June, July, and August, or even September. And like, let's, let's get that going and make it. However, you want at least six weeks before the event, not anymore. You don't want eight weeks because people don't know what they're doing in two months and they're not going to care. Six weeks is a sweet spot. <laughs> so six weeks, you're going to send a save the date. I'm going to talk to you about my touches. Um, you could do it in four weeks. Anything less, I wouldn't suggest. I'm not going to discourage you like you can get it done. But the whole point of the event is to find the business and to find the business, you need to make all these touches and to make all these touches, you need time. So if you're going to plan an event, always allow six weeks is the sweet spot. That being said, the touches are the most important part. And I mean, I don't want to say like it's a lot of work, but this is important because this is taking your form of lead generation. So people like you can't just host an event and email somebody once. You can't do that. People aren't going to come. They either didn't see it. They forgot about it. Like they need to be reminded. So just like you're kind of reminding people if they're in the buy and sell process, you need to remind them about this event. You need to invite them. Like people are more wanting to come when they know they got a personal invite from you. So here are an are all the ways that you can reach out to whoever you're inviting. If you maybe want to mail and send to save the date out, like it all depends on your um, budget, but you can mail something. 
you obviously have email, we have phone call, we have text. Some people have, you know, broadcast, voicemail. All these are the options of you trying to touch them over the six weeks, which we're going to talk about. I'll show you my plan because I um, I don't like the phone or I like the phone. I don't like to talk. <laughs> I don't like to call people. So I don't call people because it doesn't work for me. But if it does work for you, I'm really going to encourage you to call because that's where you're going to have really powerful conversations. I have very powerful conversations through Facebook Messenger and text message. That's what works for my business. Try things on, try it for you. But I don't want to discourage a phone call because people will be really happy to hear from you that, hey, I'm throwing this, you know, this, I'm getting people together and I'd love for you to be there. One, when you do it on phone, it's that much harder for someone to say no to. But anyways, Here's my plan on how I do it. So for the touches and event, and you can screenshot this. Um, I send out six weeks out. I send out save the date by an email. So I let them know that I'm hosting. We'll just do the egg hunt that I had. So I'm hosting the egg hunt. I let them know the date. And that's all I let them know. Maybe if I know like what's about the event, I can add that. But really, your main focus is making sure they save that date and they don't want to miss the event. Then usually that second week, maybe 10 days, um, I'm going to send out the email and I'm going to start asking for RSVPs. So I'm like, here's the egg hunt. It's from, you know, 10 to one. We have all these things. Please sign up. Let us know if you can make it. So two emails have gone out. Then that third week, which is shortly after that 10 days, I am going to, you're either going to make a phone call <laughs> or send a text message. And who do you think I'm going to call? I'm going to make a list of everyone that said yes and everyone that hasn't replied. Who am I going to call? Both of them. <laughs> Anybody that is already coming, I'm sending a text message saying, oh, I'm so excited that you get to make the egg hunt. And it depends on that person, but I'm going to encourage you to elaborate in a longer conversation because you're trying to get the data. You're trying to hear what they have going on in their life. You know, do they know anybody that's looking for real estate? Like you're just, you're trying to create the data to create and strengthen the relationships that they just went on vacation or they're going on vacation, like whatever is going on in their lives. Like people like to be cared about and people want to be loved. That's our job. And so I encourage you to have that conversation. And then of course, those that haven't RSVP'd, I want to let them know that I really hope that they can come. So I'm just like, Hey, did you see the email? I'm hoping that, you know, you can make the egg hunt. Uh, you know, either I resend the link through that text message saying, if you can, you can RSVP here, or you could always send it back to email. But in reality, we're in that society where you got to make things easy for people. So your it's your job to do the work to make it easy for others. So then after that, I'll have one more email reminder to everybody still. And I will say, you know, if you haven't RSVP'd yet, please do so. And then 24 hours before the event is when I'm going to text those that are coming. Sometimes if you have extra spots, I have like blasted out like, hey, I have extra seats if you want to make it because plans change. So it kind of depends on your event and if you want to have more people there or not. Um, but that 24 hours is really important because it reminds them that they're coming and just kind of creates that like buy in. And then you're giving them the last minute instructions if there needs to be any. So that's all pre-market your four to six weeks before. Then after you host the event, you're going to send a thank you email to everybody, whether they came or not, and let them know that those that missed it, you missed them. And those that came, you enjoyed seeing them, add some photos, keep it simple. And then you're going to want to send a thank you text or phone call, but I would do a text because you just talk to them. So I'm going to, I'm going to stick to my text one on this one. Send a thank you text to everybody that came to your event. And you'll probably want to follow up on the conversations that you had. Because here's what I found at the events as I'm talking to people and asking what's new. They want to know what's going on in the market. They're thinking about selling. Like, remember how I told you about that egg hunt that I had four leads? That's what came up from it. It was those conversations that were like, hey, I think my mom wants to move. We're thinking about buying or selling. Hey, we have to talk to you. And aren't those the conversations that we want? Like, you know, like we're going out there and we're lead generating, but like, I like lead generating this way. And then the business is coming to me. I'm like, yes, yes, I would like to talk about real estate. Um, and so those touches are so important. And so if this seems like a lot, there's there's a couple of things there. One is where does this fit in your business and in your like um, your work balance that you have, your work-life balance? And how many events are you going to have? And that's why if you're only going to have one, this is why I want you to plan this out because this is what's going to be your form of lead generation for that next six weeks. But anything that I do, I follow this format. I'm hosting like a small mastermind lunch tomorrow. There's always nine. I follow this. I do the save the dates. I email them. I text. I'm excited to see them. I send my email reminder. 
um, today. I'm going to meet with them tomorrow. And you bet you I'm going to send a thank you email afterwards. <laughs> like It's those little touches that you that like really solidify the relationship that you're creating. Um, the one thing that I wanted to add about this is sometimes people they have, you know, like the egg hunt, like who do I send it to? What if they don't have kids? What you're going to do is you get to really decide who you're sending this out to. So what I kind of created was like my A list, my B list, and my C list. And so my A list was all my VIPs of who, you know, like I have very strong relationships with. They refer, you know, business, or I know like I'm the top, like they're always like, you're, you're my real estate agent. Like if I hear anybody, I'm going to send them your way. Those are my VIPs. And then of course, always, always invite all your past clients. Um, because there's the ones that have already used you and they already like, know and trust you. And we know that most people, if they had a great experience, which I'm sure they did, so they would use their real estate agent again. It's just a matter of you staying top of mind. And so this is an awesome way to stay connected with everybody, um, by keeping them through this because we know not everyone's going to sell every year. So I get to see them, you know, one to three times a year through just these community events, and then when they're ready to buy or sell, I'm right there for them. But that being said, so when you have that, like that A-list, even if that A-list, like, you know, if it's an adult only or if they, if it's a kid-friendly one, you're going to send it to everybody because it's the touch. The touch is what's important because you're showing up and staying top of mind with not just real estate. And that's the difference. Like you might have your marketing, you know, market update that you're sending them real estate wise, you're sending them something different. So send it to everybody on your A-list. And then the same thing for when you send that thank you, you want to send it to everybody. I recently did it with like a listing lead. I knew she was um, an empty nester. She's on my list. She got the invite to come to the egg hunt and she replied and she's like, oh, this is so cute. She told me some personal things. And then of course I sent the thank you and she's like, oh, thank you. These pictures are so great. So never underestimate the power of the touch that you are doing for it. That's what's important. It's not important who shows up. Like we always want, you know, especially if you're throwing it and you're putting the time in, like you want people to show up. Of course, I'm there for it. But I always have to remind myself, I'm like, it is what it is. Like if not everybody can come, because sometimes I find myself getting disappointed when someone can't make something. Um, but I have to remember that's okay. Like I still did all the right activities because it's the touches that matter. Any questions on the touch system? And I can't see the chat, so Tanya. If no. I do. This is Tramisha. Hi, Tanya. Hi, everybody. Um, hi, Tramisha. So when you're saying do like small touches, I know graduation season is approaching very fast. And I had already kind of like put it in my head to do like small gift cards for my neighbors because like everybody puts the signs out because of COVID. Is that something you're talking about? You want to do small, like small gift cards to who? The grad, the students that are graduating. Like in my neighbor, because I know most of the parents, because we've been here for quite a while now. So yeah. I've seen these kids kind of grow up, you know, for the past few years. So a small touch, even though I'm not touching the parent directly, I'm still like, hey, here's a small token from Tramisha EXP Realty. Congratulations. Yeah, absolutely. If it's in your budget, I don't know how many like students that you have there. So it does depend on your budget because gift cards can add up. Um, but yeah, even if it's like just a few and you have the four and you have the hundred dollars, those little, I, I like to call those pop by touches. And I almost consider them I actually didn't bring that up yesterday, but um, that's a great way of saying it in front of people as well as those little pop buys is what I call them. And yes, absolutely. I do have a question about that mm -hmm. um, for pot buys. What are some of the general pot buys of you that you've done that are cheap that create a big impact? And do you always have pot buys here and there to give out because you're around all these parents and people <laughs> in the community? Yeah, I do it. So one is you can do it. There's a Facebook group called Pop Buys, like look it up or something. Um, I can actually even find it. And they have really great ideas. There's a few different ways to do it. Some people do Pop Buys where they're really like farming and they, you know, do something and they're they're cheesy with it, which I totally think cheesy works. Like one is that has to fit your personality Two, it doesn't matter. Like marketing is just important to stay on top of mind. So even if like cheesy is not quite you, like you stopped somebody, they read something like 
you know, even if they threw in the trash, like your top of mind. Um, but I, I don't necessarily have cheap Popeyes. Um, I strategically really watch my database. It's part, like part of my sphere to know like what they have going on where I want to do something. So like I had a past client that passed away, but her daughter lives there. And like, I provided dinner for her and her two kids. Like that is a pop by to me and it's more expensive, but I'm like, what is going on in my sphere's life that I can touch base with? Um, an easy one that I did was like my kids went strawberry picking. <laughs> and so then I bought all those little green packages and I did do something cheesy. I thought I was like very, very something that they were in my life. Um, and I dropped <laughs> off fresh berries, um, to whoever I hadn't felt like I touched in a while, or if I hadn't like seen them at an event. Um, I don't have a system for pop buys because I have a creative soul where I like to change things. So usually I just kind of look at like, what can I do? So like this month you have, um, Cinco de Mayo. So you can kind of either come up with something, you can Google it. Like there's lots of stuff out there, but do you have like a few past clients that instead of inviting them to an event, you want to, I don't know, drop off some taco seasoning or like, you know, do you want to talk about the market? There's like, there's totally something there that you can do. But that being said, I'm not going to go down the Popeye chain. Let's go back to the events is you can have, I'm actually having one, a Cinco de Mayo, Cinco de Mayo, Cinco de Mayo party. I mean, tacos are easy. Have a couple of friends over, have 10 to 15 people over. You can tell people to bring food. Like you don't have to do everything. Um, so there's that. And then uh, like Mother's Day, I've dropped off like a bottle of champagne with like a little um, orange juice. Um, but again, like they're, they're people that I know. So if I'm going to do a pop air people, I know I'll spend a little bit more. Um, but if you don't really know them, that's when you kind of want to do the cheaper way. So, and those are like kind of two different things, but it's definitely a form of my lead generation. It's fear talking, it's pop buys and it's events and then social media. So, um, okay. So back to we had all the, the touches. And so now I want to go a little deeper into the touches because this is really important in your business is you need to track your RSVPs. You want to know who's coming, but this is where you're going to collect the information. We're not just throwing this gathering just because you're doing it purposefully. So you need their information. I have done all of these ways. You can do all of the ways. I'm going to tell you the best way. The best way is either going to have a Google form or a Jot form. They're very similar. I like Google form because it's just in my Google Jot form. You have a little bit more, like more ways to make it like fancier and you have a little bit more control of it. Um, but those both work for me. You can do event bright link. Um, I've done that before. I just want to ask like specific questions and I want to keep my clients um, make it very easy for them. And I found like event bright link was just like not doing my tickets correctly. And then I've done a Facebook event, which you absolutely can. But when you do a Facebook event, you're not gathering people's information because they're just clicking. Yes, I can make it. And even if you drop that Google form link and say, please RSVP on the link, only half of them are going to do it. So <laughs> take my word for it. And when you're going to do it, I would either do like an event bright link or a Google form. So of course, you want to talk about what's going to be on that. And um, by the way, with your RSVPs, when you're kind of tracking that for the food and everything, with your total count of number, you can expect about 20% not to show. I have the range of 10 to 25. It's definitely around 20%. I've hosted many small gatherings to big gatherings. It's 100% correct. People get sick, plans change. So you can kind of factor that in to make sure you're not like over purchasing because um, no one wants to run out of food, but you don't want to over purchase or anything like that. So on that Google form is really going to go back to the whole number one reason why you're gathering uh, or why you're having this gathering is the whole outcome from it. Um, but you're going to want their name, phone, phone, email address is up to you. So it really depends on what I'm doing. Like if I'm inviting all my past clients and I already have their address, I'm not asking for that information because I know I have it. However, now that I'm really focused on adding um, to my database, it's very important for me to ask for that address, even if a past client has it, because anyone new coming in, I really want their information. But those are the things that you want in your database. So that's really what you should be collecting. Um, I would say the most important is having someone's email because we do have, you know, the records where we can stalk people and find their address. Um, but it's nice when they give it to you. So the most important thing you're really going to want is that email. But when you ask people for their information, they give it to you. So ask, <laughs> ask for their name, phone, email, and address. Now there's two things is sometimes on that form before I will ask um, real estate questions, as you can see here, because 
if you don't ask, it's already a no. So I either ask about real estate um, in this form before they come so that then when they come, it's just about them and creating the experience. Or I've also done sign-in sheets. So in that case, I just wanted their information, their name, phone, email. And then when they come in, they re-sign in. And this is where, you know, I ask them these questions. So I always like to start about somebody else. Usually if you ask them if they have real estate needs, it's kind of like, no, I don't. And so I want to open their mind. So I always ask them first, do you know someone who like needs help buying or selling? Do you know anyone that has any real estate needs? And I actually usually say, do you know anyone that has, you know, real making a move in the next year? Because sometimes people know someone that's moving next year and they don't think that they should give you that name but they should, because we all know one year means six months, which six months means you should be talking to me now. <laughs> um, and then I do ask them, do you have any real estate needs? You'd be surprised of how many people you know um, have real estate needs. And I said, you want to ask this question because I had a good friend who, I don't know if she'd referred me business actually, but I was working on strengthening a relationship and she came to one of my egg hunts and I asked this question and guess who was looking to sell her home? She was. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Like we're like Peloton buddies and we talk all the time. I'm like, you didn't even tell me you were interested until I asked her. So that's why you want to ask this question because you really never know who's looking to make a move in your database unless you ask. So ask if they have any real estate needs. And then another important question that I usually like to ask too um, is, do they want to know, um, like, do they want to have a market update on their property? And I like to kind of be, you know, funny and casual sometimes. And so it was like, yes, please send me the information. And it was like, no, you know, thanks. I'm okay with my Zestimate. Um, but if you don't ask, it's already a no. Like you're sure I got like 80% no's that didn't want a market update, but I got 20% that did. So <laughs> that's all that matters. Like we tend to focus on all those no's, but you have to have the no's to get the yeses. So, but your key here is, is that you don't want to ask all these questions. You can't be needy. So you need to decide where in your business, like, what do you need? And so like, if you really need to know, like, if you need that now business, you need to ask who they know, who do they know that's looking to buy or sell? And do they have any real estate needs? And you can stop it there. Um, for me, as I'm building the database, like I really want to, I want to get them on my, I use a home bot system that is, um, property information. And I really want to get them on that. So I want them to say yes to me sending them information. So I'm really going to ask if they want that market update. Questions on kind of how this RSVP um, form should look or thoughts? Um, do you have just a, do you have anything that you can just kind of show? Do you, do you make it just very basic or do you brand um, the Google um, sheet, because I know some people that will totally brand it and some will just send it. Yes, so. I am. I worked very hard with my personality that done is better than perfect. <laughs> um, and oh, so, yeah. no, it's not perfect. It's not branded. Do I have ambitions and goals of making it branded? Yes. And then I find myself, oh, I need a Google form. And I just quickly, I want their information. And it has, you know, the Malik group of EXP. There's a title. So, Yes and no. Um, just don't be afraid just to get started and then know that you can build and make it better from there. So I just marketing, it really, really drains me. <laughs> and so I don't, it's not anything fancy. It's very simple and it gets the job done. People respond and people give me their information. <laughs> well, it's really funny because you play that off really well. I would think that you just really love marketing. No, no, not like some, not like a tedious task like that. Yeah. So like, cause so I like to, I move fast so I can move fast with that Google form name, email, yeah. did a required and I can be done, but to slow down and be like, oh, I should really brand it and switch my colors, which if I just took the time to do it, it, it probably would be okay. I just haven't taken the time to do it. <laughs> so, but so that shows not everything has to be perfect. You do you. Um, but it does, I mean, it looks more professional that way too. If you had it like Tina Bellevue, um, if you follow her, she's big on events too. Her stuff's very branded. So I'm working up towards that. I just figure brick by brick. <laughs> um, all right. So now let's talk about the money. So sometimes people like someone said, you know, before, can I buy gift cards? Um, absolutely. Like you have to look at your budget and decide you know, what you can allocate that money towards. So look right now and do you spend any money on marketing? Like, are you paying for any leads? Are you investing in any farming? Are you paying for any social media ads? And can that money be allocated more towards creating these gatherings, creating these events and loving on your database? Um, and that's how you can do that. 
I had a zero dollar budget because I like to lead with revenue. And so what I actually did was I started out with just like coordinating things of bringing people together and coordinating things um, to give back to the community. So my very first, it's not an event, but my very first event was back to school supplies. And I had, I actually worked with a lender who bought me brown paper bags and I had a flyer. And all I did was I farmed a neighborhood um, and put, I didn't even knock it. I just farmed the neighborhood, left it there and said I was collecting school supplies. I gave them information that they could leave their information, asked if they wanted, you know, market value or if they had any real estate needs. I reached out to my database to let them know that I was collecting school supplies. I told my neighborhood I was collecting school supplies and they could drop it off at my porch or I'd be happy to go, you know, collect it for them. You have to be careful on your time. I said Frederick County only. I wasn't going to go drive two hours to get school supplies. But these were all the touches where I was in front of people for a different reason other than real estate. And we all know that when you do have time to, you know, to give back to the community, like you feel good. Like I enjoyed doing that because I know I helped a lot of kids who couldn't have school supplies and I got to go to the school and I got to drop off like 25 bags full of school supplies, which again, like I strengthened relationships by talking to people who I knew. I told my neighborhood, I chose to farm a neighborhood and got some database ads. I went to the school. I, you know, the principal saw me, the secretary, you know, met me like you see how like one small thing, I always like to say, well, how can I make this like with the most legs to help the most people and to be in front of the most people? The next one was a coat drive. I worked with the PTA at school and I collected coats. Like you'd be amazed that people, like, people want to give. They just, we all, we all don't have that much time. And so people just don't take the time to do it. So if you don't have the money, think about how it can show up for you by doing something like running these donations or just being part of a board or, you know, a charity that you feel passionate about or volunteering your time. Because again, the business is with the people. So like when you're around more people, you know, like even if you want to say like, I want to go um, serve soup at the soup kitchen, they're looking for three people. Can anyone else come? Like that is you creating community. That is you showing nicely that this is what you're doing. But people want to come help. I promise you. I know they do. <laughs> they just don't want to think about it. So when you take out the thinking for people and you just show up as that advocate for how we can get back to the community, it's just a win-win for everybody. Um, so that being said with the money, that, that's how you can get started. I still do those things because they're great and they don't cost a lot of money and I love to give back. What I now do is like if I have at the event, I also do, um, you know, I collect. So sometimes I collect donations for the food bank where people can just grab something from their pantry. Um, this last year, like groceries are expensive. <laughs> so I actually didn't do that. And I, there was a, there's a nonprofit company kind of similar to like a Goodwill, but they accept like your clothing and household items and books and games and things that you're rid of, get, want to get rid of like spring cleaning. And then their net proceeds go and support, um, local animal nonprofits. So instead of asking my database and my sphere to, you know, bring groceries, I was like, Hey, can you do some spring cleaning and can you bring some stuff off? And like, we got buckets and buckets full of stuff. And like, who doesn't drive around in their car with some stuff they want to donate to? I did it for them. So start like really looking for the opportunities of how you can give, give to your community. Start looking for the opportunities, how you can meet people and start looking for those opportunities, how you can create community because they're around you. I hope that I'm changing your mindset for you to start finding them. But when you do start having that money or you budget it, don't pay for all of it. Get some sponsors. In this industry, you work with a lender. You give the lender business. You give the title company business. business. You give your home inspection business. Maybe you work with um, home insurance. You can ask them to support you um, in this so that not all costs are out, out of pocket. So there's events where I pay $0 and there's events where I pay very minimum and I have most of my sponsors paying for everything. And so this is where it comes to um, your budget. I was seeing one. Oh, did I miss one? No, okay. So this is where it comes to your budget, which we'll, we'll get to at the end, but ask the people who you support to support you. And someone in the, I, I taught this yesterday too. And they're like, well, what do I ask for? How is that value? I actually have an awesome event playbook that, 
you watch this. So now you have like the big vision and the mindset and you have, you're ready to go do it. I have the tact of that tact, those tactics for you in my event playbook. And it'll show you the things that you can tell the sponsor that you're going to do. So I usually say like, you'll be in X amount of emails. I'll do, you know, two or three social media blasts. I do some type of value to show, Hey, I'm going to let them know that you were a part of it. You know, this is what I'm going to do. Do you want to be part of the sponsorship? And it's the same thing, like asking if someone wants to buy or sell. Sure, you're going to get no's. I got no's. They're like, no, it's not in the budget. Thanks for thinking of us. That's okay. But then ask, you know, those, ask another one and start building those relationships because they will help you. They want to help you. So don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid for the no. But, oh, so I already said this, so I did swap them. Sorry. But as I talked about with your budget and estimate expenses, you can do a charity where it doesn't cost anything. You can do at your home, which I talked about. I know two things. I know someone who hosted a holiday party in December for her, a few past clients and her sphere. And she had like 30 to 40 people in her house. And like, they loved it because people like people want in your home too, whether it's big and fancy or it's small, it doesn't matter. People are excited to get out of their house. People are excited to go to something. So don't underestimate the power of not using an event place, but keeping it cheap and using it at your home. You can also like partner with other businesses. So keep an eye out on businesses that may want exposure or like maybe they don't get a lot of business like on a Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday and you can support that business by, you know, hosting something there or they're cheaper. You know, someone gave me the idea like if a new store, like a new boutique opens up, you could create an event there of like, you know, sip and shop where you're again, you're just creating that space to get in front of people and talk to them and they can shop. And like that boutique is happy because now they have, you know, 20 to 50 people that came for that event. Just don't underestimate asking people and finding those opportunities. Um, and sometimes, you know, people just want the more exposure. So ask, ask for a discount, ask for free, ask how you can collaborate. Um, and then of course, if you're going to have the big event, you're going to want to budget it out accordingly. So before I host it, then I'm like really get an idea of how much the event will cost how many people do I think are going to show up what's my estimate on food and drinks you know do I need some type of activity which we'll talk about and I really draft everything of what I think my budget will be so that I can make sure I feel comfortable spending that amount of money and then it also helps me um ask the sponsors so I know how much I can discount and then I'm like okay this is going to be a good fit because no one we don't want anyone to go in debt here we don't want you spending thousands of dollars so when you're hosting that big event just do it smart and price it out ahead of time so you can stay within your budget all right so now we're going to get to creating the experience we did all the work all the way up to your event and now it's your events and I'll tell you every time before every event, I get excited and I get nervous. I'm like, what was I thinking? Are people going to have fun? And then they do. And it's great. But here's your basics on how to um, create the experience. Because sometimes people say too, they're like, well, I'm not a party planner. Or I'm not the hostess with the mostest. Well, either am I. <laughs> It's not what I liked. I didn't like it, but I do follow these very simple tactics and it's very easy. So you're going to want some kind of greeter. It can either be you um, or if you like sponsors there, you know, part of it, you can ask a friend. Um, just start looking for that, but have someone be a greeter. I've had young girls do it for me. Like my, um, my friend's kids are 15 or 16. I had a babysitter do it for me once. I did it. I had a sponsor do it. Like you can decide, but you do want someone to greet them when they arrive and you want them to acknowledge that they're here, let them kind of know if there's details about the event. And then in, that's either a check-in or a sign-in. So going back to that Google form, if I did not ask any real estate questions, I'm going to ask for real estate questions on my sign-in sheet. I don't do this for all the events, but if you're only hosting one, you need to ask. If you're hosting two, I would ask any more than that. You might want to have it look a little bit different so that they're not like, oh, she's inviting us to another event and asking for business. Um, because the whole goal is to stay top of mind and you have those conversations that you don't necessarily have to ask for it all the time. Um, you always have to feed people and have drinks. So whether, again, it's on you or not, the perfect example is I have um, an agent. She's going to host um, her first grade end of the school year bash. All she's doing is hosting at a park. There might be like a little community fee for the um, pavilion. She has decided that she'll provide the drinks. And then she just told everyone to bring a snack to share. 
that is an event. <laughs> that is an event that's going to cost her a hundred bucks maybe. Um, and she's doing all the things. She sent out the save the date. Then she's going to do the, you know, the email, the RSVPs, like who can come. She's going to do the reminders, everything like that. Um, so the food and drinks doesn't always have to be you. Just then make sure people are bringing it because people need to eat and people need to drink. You can even do, you know, if you like do a brewery where you um, have drink tickets and buy a beer, but there's a food truck that's not on you. Like, okay, so it doesn't always have to be on you. You just need to make sure there's food and drinks. And then, of course, you like you typically want some kind of activity. So why, you know, why are they there? Um, like at the egg hunt, I have my Easter bunny and I had some crafts and then eventually I had balloon artists and I added on face painter. Like I add things on, I don't necessarily host the huge event first. I add it on, but I always have a few things that they have some kind of activity to do. A huge win is the giveaway raffle and or contest. People love this. They love to win things. They love to sign up. <laughs> it's also a way. Yes. <laughs> so do, do that. You can have that be sponsored. You can sponsor, sponsor it yourself. I've done gift card to a movie theater. I've done, you know, Yeti um, mugs. I've done um, a solo stove. Like it doesn't matter. 50 bucks to 250. People like to win. I'm doing like a $25 gift card right now for a pretzel place. And all these people are signing up. People like to win. This is also a creative way. If you're looking for um, incentives, so like if you're looking for, we talked about like referrals, I mean, not referrals, sorry, um, reviews, you can say if you leave a review, you know, you get extra, you know, tickets for the raffle or something like that. Um, but people love that. And then, of course, we already talked about, but you can support the charity. People like to help people. So if you're saying this supports the charity or this is how they can help, people are, are wanting and willing to do that. Um, but this is all important and part of the event because the huge thing is like, it's all about how that person feels when they're there. And so this is going to give them the warms and fuzzies when they're greeted. They're going to see you in conversation. They're going to have a nice time with food and drink. They're maybe going to get to win something. They brought something for charity. And it's just like basically this win-win all around where they felt good. They had a great time. And I think it's really awesome because as I'm hosting these, like I'm excited, but it's always nice to get good feedback. And the feedback is just amazing. People are like, so thank you so much for doing this for us. Thanks so much for the community. This is really great because people want to do activities and they want to do activities where they know people. And like people got, start to get to know people because they see each other, you know, like they're, we're either connected through the sphere and my community, or they've seen each other before and people crave connection. All right, so finishing up 658. Sorry, I'm almost running out. I almost done. Um, but you want to end with a bang. You don't just want to have the event and have it end. You need to follow up with everybody. So, like I kind of broke it down, you want to send an email to thank everyone for coming, show them a few photos that you took, let them know anything. Um, you want to touch base with everybody that came. That is so important. It just really solidifies that you're so thankful. They feel important. And I don't think I've said that yet, but like they feel important. That's what they want. People want to feel important. They feel important and love that you took time. Plus real estate agents are known to be busy, whether you're busy or not, they think you're busy and you are. So knowing that you took the time to thank them, they're going to really appreciate that. And then of course we talked about the FOMO, but it's there and I'm, you have to do it as you need to show up on social media and let people know what they miss because you're creating this community environment where people want to come be a part of it. They want to come be a part of it. The fun that you're having, they want to, they start thinking of you with real estate needs. It's great when like they have a referral, I invite them into my VIP group and then I stay top of mind, which just brings more referrals and it's a win-win for everybody. So, well, that's, I guess that's talk about it. You can share on social media, take lots of photos and videos because you can also remind people, remind them if you're hosting that same one or you can say, oh my gosh, last month event was really great. Like make sure you take the photos. And then a little trick that someone just taught me was for the event, you can have a hashtag for it. That way, because I did find a lot of people take photos and like we're in the business, we understand sharing is caring and tags and things like that. The consumer does not, that's not in our world. They don't understand how important it is for them to tag us or something. And it's people take photos all the time and they don't tag me. And that's okay. You know, if I had another like push for that, like I've done contests or something, if I really want them to do that. Um, but I, I have asked if they've done a hashtag, then I can easily find all those pictures. And then now I can add them and I can use them for marketing. All right, we made it. Um, I'll exit out of here. 
Um, so ooh, seven o'clock. All right. I do have one link that I wanted to share. And then of course I'm here for any questions, but I had talked about that event, um, that event playbook that kind of talks about the sponsorships or with the questions that I ask on the Google form. And it also goes over all those ideas that you can do for a gathering that are free or not free. So you can kind of decide what you want to do. And I just have to grab the link and then you can sign up for it and I will send it to you. And I will open up for Q and A as I look for that, if there are any questions. So I would like to ask you, yes. so you said you did, was it 27 to what a year? Uh, anywhere from 25 to 27 units per year. Okay. So tell me how you, like, how does that number work for you as a mom, um, as a wife, um, is that a good number that creates a good income for you? Um, does it let you, does it allow you to be with your family? Because when real estate agents get into the business, they have this like, I'm going to do hundred and I'm going to do 50. <laughs> and I do talk to them about, you know, it takes the energy to do that. So tell us more about that number and how it works for you. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's two things. I think there's a reason why I am there because I know that it produces the business that gets us where we need to be financially. And that I don't feel like I'm working all the time or I'm tired and, you know, emotions and things like that. Um, so I think that's helpful. But my most important thing is um, really just being very purposeful with my time. I find that we all do things where we think we're busy and it's really not important. And so when I really realized like, what was that 20%? Like, what do I actually need to do in my business? I work, I don't have to work that many hours in my business for it to produce the 25 to 27. I mean, I probably work, I don't know, 15 hours a week, maybe. <laughs> But I'm very purposeful on relationships and, you know, staying in touch with people and on social media. And that's one thing why, like, I am ready to grow right now. The kids are a little bit older. Um, and so that's why I'm like, okay, this year I decided, I was like, I'm ready to grow to that 35 to 40 units um, just because of time and because of having my husband, I think I could handle it. Did that answer your question? Yeah, I do love that because, you know, we know that you didn't just get there that there's that saying, you're as good as your last sale. You have created these systems that has helped you get there where you can actually work 15 hours. So it's systems. And there's a, in the business, like there's, there's times and there's peaks where like you have to hustle. Like, so, I mean, I hustled for three years where I did work a lot and I hosted one to two open houses every weekend. And I had different, you know, quality time with my family, but there's times of building that momentum, you know, and even right now, like I know it's a peak season. So I know I work a lot more right now and I'm okay with that. My kids understand because they know come like August, September, and then November, December, you know, it's just kind of having that balance. But uh, it's it's focused on the right activity. I found that COVID taught me that lesson that I was way, 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 way too busy on things that were not income producing. And so now I really focus on that and I have good boundaries and I can say no because I know what drives the business and I know I want to have that good family time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Questions on events? Is anyone, is anyone, everyone ready to host their first gathering or event or anything? Or any ahas? I have a question. Oh, yes. I am just wondering with some of the events that you host or that some of us might host that are more personal, mm -hmm. like the, uh, I'm hosting this event for my sons for all the first grade. Yes, you were who I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Would you ask as many real estate related questions on the forms? Uh, well, it depends on what your goal is. So is your goal to strengthen relationships or is your goal to find business? I think for this particular one, it would be more about strengthening relationships because it's just sort of just beginning. Um, so yeah. So no, I wouldn't. I, what I would do is I'd make sure that I friended everybody on the social media platform that I like to be on. And mm -hmm. I would show up on as real estate, like maybe even extra around that time. Um, and let them know that I'm in real estate. So they're getting to know me because of me and the kids, but then they're seeing that I'm in real estate and it's at that like next event or even that next conversation that you can start asking them about real estate. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Good question. Any others? Quiet group. No. 
Um, I just think, you know, the aha is you just made it so simple because everybody's so afraid to go out there and people don't have the money to do it and just having it in your, like your taco thing, you're having people over for tacos, like, Hey, do you want to go to a soccer game? And like, you just gave so many just nuggets that there's really absolutely no excuse for people right now to not be generating leads. It's just purposeful time. So when you, when it's your job to realize I need to be with people and I am an extrovert introvert, I'm an introvert. <laughs> you think I'm an extrovert? I am not. Um, and so that's why I did start really small and really intimate. And then it just grew from there. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, and uh, everybody make sure you guys go on and uh, get her event playbook. And uh, we appreciate you coming on, coming on and we look forward to having you on again. Yes, absolutely. Well, if you have any questions, they can always reach out. Sometimes people are like, how should I do this? Or how can I do this? Or I have this, you know, this, I could tap into this and I don't know how to do it. I have a creative mind and soul. And I'd love to help you figure that out because we overcomplicate things and we don't need to do that. Um, questions. Some people are asking me, do you do individual coaching or group coaching around this kind of thing? Yes, I do. I, the best one is actually like the whiteboard strategy session. That's just a one time because that's how I created my business plan. And um, it's nice because it's really around you. I felt like I needed it in my business. And then when I found it, that's when the business grew. So I do a whiteboard strategy session. It's about 90 minutes. And then you get Voxer access to me for two weeks where we really come up with like, how much time do you have for business? What do you really like to do? And then making sure that you do it. So I did it for Sarah, who just spoke, um, who was on here. And it was great because she really knew like how she needs to have a mom date. She's going to get involved with her church. Like it's it's being very purposeful of things that you already have in your life, but it's just looking at it differently. Um, so yes, I do offer that. I love it. Well, thank you so much. And um, I appreciate it, you guys and everybody, everyone that's on. Thank you guys for hopping on and anyone that's going to watch this virtual. All right. Yay. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you, Laura. Thank you.